So welcome everyone to another episode of Side Talk. This is my favorite podcast right now. And today I have Tanya Woods. She is a writer and a fellow podcaster. She's also a wife and a mom. Thank you for being here with me tonight, Tanya. Yeah, girl. Thank you for having me. Yes. So Tanya has this amazing podcast called Inkfully. And Mm -hmm. um, I listened to some episodes and I really enjoyed it. Thank you. (laughs) Appreciate that. Yeah. So tell us what inspired you to start this podcast and what exactly is it about for all the people who have never listened to it before? Yeah. So um, girl, it's been a long time coming. So like five years ago, Um, I was sitting in like my nursing chair with my daughter and I was listening to my very first podcast episode, which is like a lady named Shalene Johnson. Um, She did like Turbo Jam and Turbo Fire. It doesn't really matter, but she's like a fitness instructor. She was listening to her podcast, kind of just try to get motivated to do something while I'm like sitting in this nursing chair or whatever with my newborn. Anyway, so I'm listening and I just remember how like how I felt listening to her encouragement over, you know, over audio. And it was like kind of the first time I was checking out the podcasting world and seeing what it's all about. And I knew immediately, I was just like, I want to do that. I want to make people feel connected. I want them to make them feel seen, heard, understood. You know, I want to motivate people and all those things. And so I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to launch my podcast, not knowing, as you know, on the other end of this, all that goes into, you know, putting a podcast together. So it took me a little while to finally get past the, um, you know, all the different fears that can come along with it and finally launch my show. So last year, around this time, actually, this week, I celebrated my podiversary, March of 2019. I finally launched my show. And essentially, the Inkfully podcast is a place where women can come and share their narratives in a very vulnerable and introspective way. I start by sharing a lot of my own. So we talk about marriage, motherhood, and pretty much all the stuff in between. Identity crises that you face within womanhood and, and motherhood. Um, I'm really passionate about that. So talk about, um, you know, things that we're not saying within our marriage. Like I have an episode called Surviv- Surviving a Sexless Marriage. <laughs> which mm-hmm. is like I like that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what do you do in those seasons where, you know, maybe one person's going through grief or you're in what I call a drought season, you know, how do you get through those things? And so we just have really raw, vulnerable and introspective conversations based off of the premise that our stories were never meant to be erased. You know, like it's our stories that make us who we are. And when we share them, we actually uh, invite ourselves to heal and invite others on the journey to do that as well. So, yeah. Yes. Love Mm -hmm. it. So I invited Tanya here today because one, we met, it's so funny. We have this weird connection, but not a connection, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) Like her husband was doing this pilot thing that I don't want to blow it up yet, but he's doing something, you know, that's going to be great for everyone in this community. And I was a part of that trial and he kept saying, Oh, you know, you got to get connected with my wife. You know, she has a podcast too, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, definitely. And I had reached out, but we just, the connection never, you know, met. And then I went to PodFest and I don't know what we, I think we were just sitting around, but I literally like sitting in the circle (laughs) with a bunch of random, like other, you know, women of color. We're just like, and I'm like, didn't even make the connection. Right. Because I told her, I'm like, I pinged her and said, oh, you're going to PodFest. I'm going to be there too. I want to talk to you because I want you to come on the show and then we're sitting around just like talking and I'm looking at her and I'm like wow this girl looks really familiar (laughs) I'm like oh my god you're Tanya you're the one that I wanted to hook up with so it was just so funny that we were sitting amongst each other and didn't even realize it and you know then we got connected and I love no. that. And the funny part is I felt the same way because even, not by face is hard because podcasts, you don't always recognize the faces, even though we have our face on our album artwork, you don't always make, it's really small, you know, so right. you're not making that first parallel. But I remember the name of your, is when you told me your name and then the name of your podcast where I was like, oh my God, oh, we're yeah. to connect. 
<laughs> so it was meant to be. Yes, absolutely. So no, but Tanya has some uh, beautiful cards, honey. Let's just keep it real because <laughs> your, you. your cards are you really do something nice. with that design background, child. So. Yes, it looks <laughs> yes. phenomenal. So I mean, Thank that motivated you. me because I came there with no cards. I didn't have not one card. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm getting my life together slowly. So sure, aren't we all. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are going to talk about keeping your identity after marriage and children. I thought that would be a great topic um, mm -hmm. to you know have with you because I know that this is something that you talk about quite often on your podcast, and you are a mom and you are a wife, and you can totally identify with this. Oh, one hundred percent for sure. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell us. How long have you been married? And mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about Tanya before the nuptials and then Tanya after the nuptials. Okay. So let's see. I've been married. Let's start from there. I've been married for 10 years. Actually, we celebrate 10 years next month, April 23rd. Really excited about being in the double digits. Yes. <laughs> and, um, congratulations. I got to say that. <laughs> Thank you. We have uh, three children. Um, I have a son who's who's eight, a daughter who's five, and then a, my youngest is three. And um, let me think. So where was I before? Before we were married, I was I would have been in my early twenties, just kind of graduating from college, and um, I was really uh, I would say at that point in my life very career driven, very focused on the next steps. So you know, I was my background's in marketing. So I spent a lot of time, like, you know, even in college, some people focus a lot on their, like, grades and their education, and I did, but I was actually more so focused on, like, creating opportunities for me to, like, graduate and pretty much work for, like, a Fortune 500 when I get out. So that was, like, the tra trajectory I was on. I wasn't checking for no husband, like, nothing, and then here comes this man, like, hey, girl, hey, hey, and I'm like, hold on now, <laughs> and I'm like, and I, he was, like, he was for real, like, he was a, my husband's was a really great guy, and so, um, and a God-fearing man, like, loves the Lord. And that was really important for me. And so um, that wasn't at all in my plans. Like I was thinking, you know, maybe 30 or something, I'll settle down and, you know, pursue my career for a while. Um, but all my life literally completely took a completely different turn. So that's been really interesting. And uh, why I'm actually pr passionate about identity. So what I mean by that is that, um, so right after I started my career in marketing, I was working for, um, I was actually interviewing for like Johnson and Johnson and Google. They were out in California. Our relationship was happening in uh, Florida, where we're from. And uh, long, to make a long story short, those things fell through. I wanted to stay and focus on our relationship and um, ended up taking a job um, locally with a, with Motorola. And um, that was fine. It, it was a good, good little run. And then when we got married, he had an opportunity to pursue his master's degree in another state in Austin. And so, um, so we got married immediately. I left, you know, I left my job and we both moved to Austin and I kind of was just like, okay, like now what? I think it was the first time where I had to like, you know, think about, okay, what am I going to do now? I just left my job to like, you know, move away with my husband. He's pursuing his thing, but now what for me? And then what ended up happening is I got pregnant, like straight out the gate, girl, just like <laughs> three months in. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, you know, that's, I mean, that's, that's like a pretty much summation of the beginnings, but that journey kind of just continued to evolve into this, like, what am I doing? What am, where am I going next? Um, and how that journey continued to evolve was my son eventually was diagnosed with autism, my firstborn. Mm -hmm. And so this was around when he was two or three. And during this time, we actually ended up moving to another state, moving to Seattle. So there was a lot of change throughout this like 10 years. And we've moved in, we've lived in four states, three kids. And the whole time I was literally trying to figure out where am I in this equation? Like I'm, you know, I'm submitted to my husband. I'm, you know, we're both doing this together, but what about like the trajectory for me? And I've been home raising, I've pretty much been home raising my kids since my son was diagnosed so that someone can be on the front lines making sure he gets the therapies that he and interventions he needs. So it's definitely been a journey for sure. So was that the thing that made you take a step back from pursuing your career? Was it, you know, your son being diagnosed or was it just, you know, having one, you know, a child and being married? And, you know, sometimes financially, when you have a child, it makes better sense to somebody to stay home or whatever. What was it for you? Yeah, yeah. So I think it was a combination of all those things. And you, um, everything was happening in a pressure cooker within our marriage, right? So you have all of those things going on. You have a newly married one has it one is in grad school, and I'm not in grad school, but we're, we're getting funded through just, you know, help of graduate degree, you know, graduate grants and, you know, mm -hmm. government and all that stuff. But yeah, it became this thing of like, okay, so you're a grad student, how am I supposed to afford 
childcare when this like this job situation is not coming through. And at that time, it was actually a, the downturn of our economy. Um, and it was hard to find a job. So it's like, now I have a job and I have a son, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, and then I think when it really hit, so I was still, I think I was still pushing for that to return to essentially like figure out what my next move was and continuing to apply to things. But once he was diagnosed, I think that's when I finally was just like, okay, I really don't know what's happening next in terms of my career. But what I do know is that my son needs me. So I need to like, you know, put it, take everything else off the table and focus on here, you know? So it was never like a full on decision to like, I'm leaving, like, because I no longer want to be here. It was more so this, this matters most to me right now. That makes sense. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that's what happens a lot with women. I feel like, um, I don't know, it's almost like an automatic thing that Mm -hmm. we have to take the step back and evaluate the situation and make those hard decisions. And, you know, the men kind of just, well, so are you okay with that? Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? But why is that? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like I, I did an episode on, Oh hell no. Mm -hmm. And I had this man who he decided to take the role out of the stay at home parent. Wow, okay. And he's been mm-hmm. doing it for many, many years and he loves it. And he got a lot of flack from flack, family, yeah. from people because they're like, that's not a man's place. What are you doing? Like, you're crazy. Mm-hmm. But he felt like his wife had the ambition, the not, I shouldn't say better opportunities, but she was more driven and really wants that career. Right, right, right. So yes. he was okay with saying, look, go out there and <laughs> make that money, girl, and I'll watch yeah. these kids. <laughs> you know, but I feel like it's always, you know, most of the time it's on us. We take on a lot of responsibility to share a little bit of my own story. Um, yeah, I love to hear. Yeah, I, mine is totally different. I think for me, I met my husband. I had a child. Um, my son was five when I met my husband. Mm-hmm. And we got together. And because of that, I was a single mom before then. I always had this like hustle mentality. And I just have to be something. I have to do something with my life. You know, so yep, yep. when, you know, when I met him, I was working, I was going to, to grad school and I had my son and then we moved in together and we lived together for a long time. Like we did not get married right away. We, it took mm-hmm. like seven years before we actually got married. Right. Um. So in that time I was able to kind of finish school think about what I wanted to do. I was working, I moved, I came back, like just figure out my life, you know? Yeah. And then finally, when we did decide to get married, we got pregnant first and then we decided absolutely we're going to get married and we got married and, you know, I had my daughter in September and we got married in April. We too just celebrated 10 years of marriage. So that's oh, congratulations. Said. Yeah. Last year was our 10 years. So that was that's awesome. awesome. But, um, you know, we got, we had the baby and everything and it was just like back to work. You know, I work, I, um, take care of my daughter and a lot of the day to day responsibilities, you know, fall on me because Mm -hmm. I guess I'm able to juggle them better. I don't know. My husband is very much hands on. He helps with a lot of stuff, you know, like he, takes her if I say I need you to take her to the doctors I need you to do this I need to do that yep, there's yep. no question you know he's got it so mm-hmm. I really appreciate that we're a partner in that sense because I know there are a lot of men out there that mm, that's too much for them like mm-mm. I know girl yes right it's true. but it's, it's great it's great when you can find one like that but go ahead I'm just co-signing on exactly it. Yeah. no absolutely I want you to so mm-hmm. so yeah so we have that that whole thing going on but I have always felt this for me. I have always said, I'm not just a mom and I'm not Mm -hmm. just somebody's wife. Like I have my own life. I have my own dreams. I have my own things that I want to do. And I'm going to focus on those things. I'm going to be a good wife. I'm going to be a good mom, but I'm also going to be good to myself. And that's what's always kept me a little bit grounded in 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 myself and in trying to figure out 
what does Keisha want to do? You know, how, what do I want to do with my life? Because I, my grandfather, when he was alive, he used to always tell us, your kids grow up and they leave and then it's just you. It's just you. So, you have to know. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. He used to be like, put yourself first, second, third, and what's left is still you. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's what it's going to be. So I had that. So that's what's kept me like, okay, I'm not getting lost. Not hell to the no. Mm-mm. <laughs> That's so funny. No, I mean, what you're saying is very real. And I think that we we all, we all kind of have to arrive at that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a different path for all of us. You know yes, what I mean? And absolutely. Um, that's actually something that I'm wanting to transition to focus on actually within like a coaching program because I'm so passionate about it is going through that process of introspection and figuring out, you know, what is it that I really want? You know, and what even matters most to me? What are those two things? Because what I've noticed is that when you're on the journey, you know, myself and as well as other women, when you're on the journey of trying to figure it out, are you reaching and grabbing for some of everything? Or you see your friend, you know, you see another mama doing something like, oh, I can do that. I want to do that. Or not because you're jealous, but because it's like, you're just kind of trying to figure out where you fit. You know, where do Mm -hmm. I want to do? What matters to me? And in the process, it can just feel a little bit like you're, you're stuck. Like, oh, I don't know which direction I went ahead in, or I'm super passionate about this, but I'm also a mom and I'm also a wife. And how do I balance? We're constantly, I think society's constantly asking that question to mothers, you know, like, how do we balance? How do I balance? How do I balance? And, you know, I just feel like it's a, it's a process. It's a process where we have to be gracious with ourselves, you know, yes. gracious, gracious with our season, you know, cause if I'm comparing, if I'm a new mom, I have a newborn and two year old and three year old back to back. That's a different season than someone who has preteens and a, right, you know what I mean? Right. It's 20 something like we're in different seasons. So if I see you, you know, if I see you or someone sees us chasing after some dream and it's like, but is that, and you might think, Oh, I want to do that while you're sitting in the chair you know, rocking a baby or doing this and that, but it's like, it might not be the season for you to pursue that just yet. But what can you do right now to still feel like yourself and still not lose that part of you that makes you who you are, you know? Yes. And I'm glad you said that because I wanted to kind of segue into talking about some ways that, you know, you can, after you get married and I wanted to start with marriage and then kind of go into children is like, I feel like there are some women that are raised to, you know, um, you need to get married. Some For some women, it's a cultural thing. And for some women, it's just, I don't know, that's what they're taught. You need a man. You need to get married. You need to have this, um, someone to take care of you and all Mm -hmm. those things. And then for those women, they kind of, that's what their thought process. I need to find a man and someone's going to take take care of me, Mm -hmm. right? And then they never really think about how they can take care of themselves or what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you have some women who feel like marriage is this task, that's just mm-hmm. on this list of things to do in life. And, mm-hmm. oh, I have to do this by a certain age. And if I don't, then I'm a loser. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to marry any old body. And <laughs> and they end that, up, that work. right? And then that's <laughs> yeah. like a disaster, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the other people who fall in love, you know, have really good marriages, but it's, they're just trying to balance everything. And, right. you know, they got to work it out. So I have a short list and I would like you to add to the list and, and you know, chime in wherever you want, girl. Of course. Yeah. So the first thing that I feel like we need to do as married people mm-hmm. is date your friends and date yourself. Right. Mm, OK. Yes. So explain the date your friends. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> so I have a friend that we go out on little girl dates like mm-hmm. we'll pick a restaurant and we'll meet halfway and we'll go and we'll just like, you know, dress up and just have dinner and, yeah. you know, like just talk about the day, our life, how are things going? How are your kids? How's your husband? How's, you know, just things like that. And I find it to be so refreshing. It's just like a nice little time away. 
and you get to spend time with your friends and catch up. And I do that with a couple of friends. And yeah. I think that it's a must. You you can't disconnect yourself from people. Even if your friends are not married, you still should hook up with them and hang out. And when I say hook up, I don't mean like that. People. Yeah, I know. I know. Clarify, you know, you gotta you gotta be clear because these people today <laughs> <laughs> right but like you know meet up with your friends and you know enjoy each other's company right no I totally agree and being I like how you're saying that because it's like being intentional about it you know what I mean because of yes. course you say oh girl we need to meet up we've been saying it's been you yeah. know but to have that intentionality behind it like hey I'm doing this because of the you know because I want to make sure I'm continuing to connect with myself my own identity and you know what I mean having that strengthening that bond because we know how hard it is with in friendship Mm -hmm. to even keep those bonds unless you're intentional you know Absolutely. And then dating yourself. I always make a joke with um, my sister. I'm like, girl, I went to Coles today. I was so happy because I didn't have to bring anybody with me. Girl, <laughs> like, no, that's right. <laughs> and it's just like Coles or Target or anything yes. just to kind of be by yourself, the hair store, whatever it is, you know, but just getting out, going to get your nails done or your, yeah. your, you know, whatever your hair, make time for yourself, just yourself. Um, it's true. Catch your husband or your baby daddy or your man whatever you got or your <laughs> woman whatever and say listen I need time to go and get my hair done we have a shared calendar here mm-hmm. in my house we and do too. Yep. when you want to do something you put it on the calendar a month in advance they cannot tell you oh That's I didn't right. see that <laughs> Right. And look, and look, if you have to put it down into business meetings. <laughs> exactly. Do what you must. But that is a great yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Another thing is finding hobbies and investing in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yep. So like, you know, you found this podcast that you love and you're very passionate about it. Same thing with me. I discovered podcasting. Unfortunately, I can't remember the first podcast that I listened to because I have ADD and I try to I like listen to so many things. Like I don't remember yeah. what the yeah. first thing was, but I kind of felt the same way. Like, oh, this is such an interesting medium. Hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe I can do it, too. It doesn't seem like you have there's rules, you know, right, and right. that's what started me challenge yourself, you know, don't be afraid to do something new that you haven't done before. You know, you could do it with your spouse, you could do it with your friends, or you could do it by yourself. You know, maybe if you yeah. don't, like me, I'm still trying to learn how to swim. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so that is something <laughs> that I need to really try to do again after this corona blows over i know and i know it's like i feel like i even when it comes to swimming i feel like i think i know how to swim but then when i'm like but my husband was like literally just the other night he's like okay but if you were thrown in an ocean would you survive like if there were no <laughs> pool edges would you be okay i'm like uh no right I mean, who would he's like people who know how to swim to the shore I'm yeah like, oh. he's right <laughs> I guess I don't know how to swim. Girl, get yourself a swimming class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll both need to be in there because um, exactly. it's a no for me. But yes, <laughs> challenging yourself. Yeah. Also, this one is very important. Keeping yourself up. Mm-hmm. And not just yep. for your man, but for yourself as well. Because I feel like if you just always walk around looking bummy and I know sometimes when you're home because I've been working from home for like maybe two weeks now and I've been girl mm -mm, I've been doing a (laughs) a bun (laughs) no makeup lip balm you know leggings and I'm starting to be like okay I need to like maybe one day I don't know put on some lipstick because I'm a lipstick person I love lipstick but you know, I could just imagine if you're a stay at home mom. Oh, girl, you have to listen. It's like this is something that actually I'm ju- like literally when I say just so everyone who's transitioning from like I've been working, working, working. So I've been home and like what did like all these memes like um what if, what I heard one say that said, um, I don't know who needs to hear this. But today's Thursday, May 26th. You know, like it's just like, <laughs> yeah, memes about like you know, what day of the week is it, what day of the week is it? And like, you know, you're in your pajamas for three days. I haven't showered. I haven't brushed my teeth. Cause you know, you don't have that. That's like a real thing for yes. mothers like myself who stay at home. And that's what creates this like loss of identity. Imagine that not just weeks, but months and then years. Like I've been home for 10 years. So it's been like, and it, and it feels like you don't even realize you're slipping away because you're putting everyone else 
in front of you and like you literally you're being you're deprioritizing yourself and it's and that happens naturally unless you're intentionally intentional about um about essentially like you know curving that or you know mm-hmm. changing that because it, it just happens so easily just like you're saying you're, you've been home for two weeks and it's just like wait what what's going on what's right. happening now it's, you know so i have been I, I would say in the last like few weeks for sure um but like over time I'm like okay this is something i want to improve like something that i think is really important is like for me it's waking up before my kids mm-hmm. and having that me time having that time to um own like seize my day essentially to you know what I mean? To grab hold of it instead of it grabbing hold of me with all of its demands, you know, setting yep. the tone for my day, meditation, prayer, you know what I mean? Working out, having those things. Now, I haven't mastered all of them, but that's like some of the things I want to harness. But the one point that you just made, just simply getting dressed is something that I have been able to really um, grab hold of. And it's completely changed like the entire cadence of my day, like how I view myself, how I feel, my sh- my shoulders are, you know what I'm saying, back mm-hmm. a little bit, I feel cute, you know, cute, yeah. cute, like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can whack past a mirror and still feel like I have an identity and it has nothing to do with, I'm dressing for my husband because we're going on a date or I have to go pick up my kids from this, that, and the third, it's like, no, this is for me, right. you know? Yes. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Even, I was going to say, even some outfits that I used to think like, hey, this is a going out, like this cute jumpsuit is something I wear when I go out because it, you know, it may be more pricey or just makes me feel a certain way. I'm like, wear that for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, why not? Like, I know you don't have nowhere to go, but wear it anyways, because it makes you feel better, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. Yep. I love that. I was saying, oh, I said, while I'm home, I'm going to try these different, um, this is totally off topic, but I was like, I'm going to try different hair products that I have in here that I haven't used yet oh, to yeah. see, <laughs> you know, what can, what's going to happen. So I right. tried this one, um, um, Miss Jessie's currently, mm-hmm. you know, which one? <sighs> The honey something one. It was like in one of these gift bags that I got from an event. Okay. It was not good. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> nope. And I know everybody's curls are different, but right, that one right. was a, oh, hell no for me. Oh, oh hell no. Yes. <laughs> so I had to like wash my hair the next day, which I was so annoyed because I was like, okay, I'm going to put this in and I'm not going to have to wash my hair for like a, two days or something like that. Whatever. Girl. No. It was terrible. Yeah. So, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was me trying to experiment. Like, oh, I'm going to try these different hairstyles and see what looks cute and do stuff. But look, you learned something though. You learned that you didn't like that, you know? So sometimes we have to change the way that we view an experience of like, well, you know what? I would prefer it if I liked the product, but at least I now know. Right. I'm just thinking about it and thinking about it. Ooh, I should try this. Now you tried it. You don't like it. You can move on. Exactly. I (laughs) I know what does not work well with my hair. (laughs) So it might work well for everybody else because, like I said, everybody's curls Everyone's are different, yeah, right? So, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so you touched on my next point, which was you yeah. said meditate, pray, and work out and stuff. So I was saying that after keeping up with yourself, also doing those other things for your mind, your body, right? So like reading, working out, praying, meditating. I know it's hard to find time to read, especially with kids and your husband mm-hmm. and yourself or whatever, but they have audibles, right? I do right. that. I listen to books sometimes. Working out, I try to find time to work out. Meditation, I'm still trying to get to that place where I meditate. I'm hoping that this time that I have now working from home, I could get up a little bit earlier and start doing that. So that's something I really have been trying to get into for a very long time and just haven't been able to get there. Right. And there's some really good apps now out there um, that help with meditation. There's one called Calm. Um, that's like a subscription, I think it's subscription based, but the one that I use pretty much like every day now is a 15 minute, it's a 15 minute guided like Christian meditation app Mm -hmm. called, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name right now, but if it comes to me, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's essentially an app where anything that's a guided meditation, because sometimes I feel like when you start that practice, Mm -hmm. it feels like, what am I supposed to do? You know, it's called encounter. That's right. It's called encounter. Okay. So definitely look into that. And yeah, um, I'll check it out. Yeah, but in either case, you're right. Meditation and finding just stilling your mind and stilling your your body before you like, you know, before you start anything else is always a good practice for sure. Yeah. And my last tip is don't be dependent. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, being depend too dependent on your spouse is not a good thing. 
You need to have independence. You need to know how to drive. You need to have your own vehicle. Or if you don't have your own vehicle, at least you know how to take the car if you need to. (laughs) Right? Because sometimes our husbands get sick or whatever, and we have to kind of keep things moving, you know? So you want to be able to move on your own, do things on your own and be able to go out as well by yourself and not all, if your husband can't come, you can't go like, you know? Yeah. So I think that's very important independence. Yeah, I I agree. And actually I talk about that in length on one of my episodes about identity. It's about me taking this solo location because everything that you're pretty much saying, I had to figure out. that it was even a problem to begin with right so even for example dependency being home obviously our we're on one income household oh sure that's one thing um but not recognizing i still need to find my own self within that like create my own forms of um of independence even within that became an issue Mm -hmm. so my my first like step in doing that was taking this what i call and i would add this to list take a sole location so take a trip completely alone, especially if you feel like there's some underdeveloped um, areas when it comes to your codependency or, you know, your own self, um, your own like rediscovering your, your, of your identity, because what it does is it's not just, it's not a girl's trip. You're not going with friends. You're going literally by yourself. You know, you're going to do, do all those things that you might have relied on a spouse or someone to do, you know, even if it's like pumping your gas, you know, booking your own travel, you know what I'm saying? Figuring out whatever it is, everybody's marriage is different, but like I'm giving multiple examples of things that like, I know, for example, I'll take a personal example. I was at a restaurant. It was the first time in a very long time that I had eaten at like a nice evening restaurant alone, Mm -hmm. you know, and being able to like sit, even sit in the discomfort of that and be like, okay, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm experiencing, but I'm okay. And like being able to like have an introspective journey with yourself, you know what I mean? Ordering off a menu and not having someone to say like, I don't know, babe, like, what do you want? What are you going to eat? What do you think you should have? Like, I had to make all those decisions independently, you right. know? And so it might seem like, girl, I mean, just make a decision, but those are real things that happen over a time in marriage when you're so used to having a partner, which is God created partners for a reason, you know, like having that partner to like, be like, Oh, I'll, like let's share dessert and all that. But when it becomes a thing where it's like, ah, I'm, I have a hard time making decisions without the cosign of my partner. Mm-hmm. That's when it's like, you have to break away that codependency and say, for me, it was to say, just make a choice. If you don't like this meal, it's going to be okay. Like it, just like the hair products, like if, whether you like it or you don't like it, you're learning something new about yourself. Right. You know, yeah. so that was a really big takeaway for me, like having these soul locations and, and putting them on the calendar, whether it's once a year, every six months, you know, wow. having that time for myself. Yeah. I like it. Okay. All right. So now I want to move on to children, right? Mm-hmm. Cause having children changes so much. Okay, you go from being alone, only having to think about yourself. And because my journey was different, because I was a hot box, and I had to go have a baby at (laughs) 20 years old. I really wasn't a hot box. I really listen, that's life for real. Like, it is. It was my first boyfriend. And I just like was dumb. That was it. Right? Are you dumb? Like how Remy said, are you dumb? Yes, I was dumb. (laughs) (laughs) so I had a baby and responsibilities you know at 20 years old who what 20 I think I was like 21 Mm -hmm. I would never advise that to anybody living it yeah ladies please don't ever do that like you don't need a baby (laughs) at 20 you don't need a baby at 20 (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> still. Yeah. I was 23 and I still feel like, ooh, like I yeah. could have waited a little, you know, but you yeah. don't know how the anyways, you never know someone's journey, but I do feel right. you on that if you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> so try not to do that. So mm-hmm. so many things change your body, your mm-hmm. lives, time to yourself, time with your spouse or your partner, your energy levels, everything changes. Yeah. So for you, you touched on a little bit you had your first child and then your child was special needs. So that requires mm-hmm. more time, yeah. more patience. And then you had your second baby. Mm-hmm. And then you I actually found out my, I was pregnant, like right after my son was diagnosed, it happened kind of around the same time. I was like, Oh, and I'm pregnant by the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. What was mm-hmm. that like for you? 
what was it like? Yeah, like yeah. being pregnant and just finding that out and then be, you know, like that must have been really stressful. Yeah, it was a really, really challenging season. I would just say that very yeah. um, minute by minute, like day by day. You know, we all have those seasons of our life where we go through these cycles of like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Where it's grief, where it's frustration, where it's denial. You're going through these all these stages of figuring out why my child, why, right. you know, why now? Like, what, what about, what if this child has, but you know what I mean? There's so many questions, so many things that come up when it, when life doesn't, and just in a general sense, when life wasn't going the way you anticipated, whether you lose a spouse, you know, all kinds of things happen. So, um, but not to invalidate my own story of like, you know, my, with my son, when he was diagnosed, I literally, it was just like the world kind of just, it went black, but I also like, because we had that mom survivor mentality is I think as moms, as women, we kind of like, you're like, well, we de- again, I wasn't even thinking about me. So it's like, I don't even think I processed it really till like later, you know, where, because I had to like hit the ground running to mm-hmm. like make sure my son had everything that he needed, you know? So I was like, I was burning out and I didn't even realize it, you know, like yep. now that I look back, I'm like, girl, you were like on the brink edge right there and you didn't even realize that was why you know yeah and that Mm -hmm. that's what happens we we're just constantly working and doing what we have to do and taking care of people because I even do that like even at home with my family I do all the cooking I do Mm -hmm. the washing (laughs) you know the cleaning recently I started getting someone come to clean clean, right because Mm -hmm. I was like this is too much then I work full time I have the podcast on the side I sell some lashes and lipstick so let me know girl (laughs) (laughs) you know so like I got my little businesses going on and it's just it, it becomes a lot so um, I find myself sometimes saying, like, now I know, like, when I get tired, I get extremely grouchy. I get like a four-year-old. Yeah. And then I know it's time for me to stop and go right. lay down, you know? Right. So that's how I know, girl, you need to take a break. The other day, I was like washing dishes, cooking, cleaning, doing this, doing that. And then I came upstairs. I was, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash some more clothes. Or I'm gonna do that, <laughs> right? And my husband was like, I think you've done enough. Like, yeah. you need to stop. And I was like, you know what? I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. we don't know when to stop. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies. It's us, and I don't know what drives that. Yeah, you know, I think it's a good, it's a good and a bad thing about mm-hmm. our nature, right? It's just like we are. I feel like God created us to be the type of DNA that is nurturing. That's always, you know, we're loyal. We're loyal to, you know, people we're with and are to our. We're just loyal to our to our labels and our roles. You know what I mean? So sometimes we don't recognize, we don't see the signs of like danger, danger. Your tank is on E, and you're still trying to push through, Mama. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, and I just think that's just figuring out what's what's most important though I want to say is like being uh proactive mm-hmm. about with, with some of the things that you just said when we started you know when you're giving out hey do this do that and that that helps you to be proactive so that you don't have to get to the place where you're constantly trying to refill from being on E now you're just always making sure the tank has a like you know what I mean that it's not reaching the bottom of the barrel before you're like okay I'm tapped out I'm done yeah you know? Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I think that's definitely a must. That's something that we all need to learn how to do. I realize that a lot of times too, moms are like how you said, like you see other moms doing things and you feel like you need to do that or you, we need to stop doing that. And we need to do one, do what works for you. And mm-hmm. and don't worry about what Betty or Jessica's doing. <laughs> Who gives a damn? Nobody cares. Like, right. just do you, right? Take care of your kids and focus on their needs and not Bobby Jr.'s needs next door because it, it doesn't matter. It's like I was yeah. watching Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I rarely watch that, but it was just on that one. I watch the other ones. I ain't gonna lie. But yeah. <laughs> that particular episode, they were talking about someone had a birthday party for her kids and she's she's got money and she had just a, like a little party with pizza and that was it. And she was good. And then the other girl was judging her and saying, oh my God, you have so much money and you're so cheap and you just had that little party with pizza for your kids. You, you didn't even put anything, any effort into it and she's like that's what my kids like and Mm -hmm. I don't think it's cheap that I had a pizza party like you know yeah I love that right and Mm -hmm. it's like 
How dare you judge her <laughs> and tell her, you know, that she's cheap because she had a pizza party for her kids. Like, mind your business. Yeah, that just shows her own insecurity or whatever she's dealing right. with. Right. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I think moms do that to each other. Like, oh, if somebody is breastfeeding and you're you're not, oh, you didn't breastfeed your baby? No, uh, I didn't. My breast hurt. Mind your business. <laughs> like, mind your, mind your business. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, we need to stop mom shaming you know, mom guilting each other. Everybody has their own journey and their own path. Like, and you just, you know what I mean? But it's like hurt. Like people speak out of their own hurt or their own, you know, perspectives, which there's more than one way to solve a problem, essentially, right. you know, so. But I just feel when it comes to kids and how people are raising their kids, I just feel like it's just something that you need to kind of just fall back a little bit and allow people to just be. Mm-hmm. And Another thing I want to tell moms is you don't have to preface every statement about um, being tired or feeling frustrated or feeling overwhelmed with, I love my child so much, or Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. (laughs) You know, we know, you know, we understand as moms, of course, we love our children. Of course, we're happy that, you know, we get to experience being a mom. But at the same time, we're human and it's okay to be tired. It's okay to say, he get on my nerves. It's okay. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's okay to say, I've had enough. Go to your room. Like, I don't want to see you anymore today. It's fine. It doesn't make you a bad parent. It makes you human. You are so right. I've like... I feel like this hits on so many things. Like, I feel like I've been, I write this up. It's interesting how much we share in common into, um, like in terms of just generally as mothers, as women, because it's like, I was telling my husband this. I'm like, when men talk, it's not like you, they say, um, you know, I'm a father, like, like feeling like they have to fill that gap, like how we do. Like, right. you know what I mean? But I, you know what I mean? I go to work every day and I work so hard, you know, but I do, I really do love my kids. Like right. there's no disclaimer with them. So why do we feel like we have to give a disclaimer exactly. when we're, too, when we're prioritizing our own self care or our own health or our own choices? It's like, there's no disclaimer needed. That is, that should be a given just like we get, uh, we allow men to have that given, you know? Exactly. And Mm -hmm. that's, I agree. So I have some tips for, you know, what we can do as moms to, you know, take care of ourselves. So Mm -hmm. first thing is get help. Yep. And I know that it's hard because sometimes you move and you're away from your family. Like my mom lives two and a half hours away from me. My sister lives an hour and a half. Then I have another sister that lives in another state. So like, and my husband's family is in another state. So it's like, everybody's all over the place. Yep, I can relate. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you what I did do. When my daughter started preschool here, there was a young lady, you know, teaching at the preschool and her and my daughter had a great rapport. I thought she was really good with the kids. You know, she was very gentle and just, I just love the way that she handled the children. And my daughter really liked her and she liked my daughter. And I asked her if she did babysitting, you know, on the side. And then yeah. we brought her in, we interviewed her, you know, my husband asked her questions, we I asked her questions, and we mm-hmm. felt like she was responsible. And we took a copy of her um, license, because we ain't stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. Right. And you know, and we hired her and we paid her so that when we wanted to have like a date night or something, she could come over. And if you don't feel comfortable yet, you know, like, you want to test it out, go on date day um dates you know like yeah. go bowling or something in the middle of the afternoon and for two hours or something like that until you feel more comfortable that right. you, you know what i mean so that's a great way to find a what babysitter. would you say for people who are in the position where they can't afford that yet like what are some uh, tips and tricks if you're like oh, i want that but i'm not in that season where i could afford a sitter or whatever oh my god that sucks if you can't afford a sitter I'm sorry, just put the baby to bed early and you're not going to have to have date night at home. (laughs) You know, like make a little romantic dinner, put the kids to bed early. Put them early. Right, and say we're going to spend two hours just sitting, eating together, having a glass of wine or something and just, Mm -hmm. you know, being in each other's company because 
if you don't have any family nearby and you can't afford to pay somebody to come and help you, you definitely have to be creative within the home because you cannot yeah. leave those kids by themselves. Right, right. <laughs> you will end of up course. in jail. <laughs> and you know, another thing is what would I? I wish I would have leveraged this more often. But finding that those other moms in a similar situation, whether it's like a meetup or some type of moms group through a church mm. or some type of whatever shared activity, yes. you know what I mean, and be like, hey, like I mean, it's going to take some putting yourself out there and some vulnerability. Mm-hmm. To say, hey, I'm in a season of life where I got these blank amount of kids, one kid, two kid, whatever it is, and you know, but we can't afford care. Like, would you be willing to do a swap? Because um, once there was a season of, my, of our life where it was like that, and what we did was because neither of us really wanted to deal with each other's kids, and we right. just, it was like a really straight up conversation. Was like, I've been, you know, yes, I would love to do that, but also been de- we've been dealing with our kids all day. You've been dealing with your kids. How about this? How about we'll both come over when after you put the kids down. So it was like a late night date. So it was like you put the kids down at eight, how we were just saying, like put them down and then hang out. Mm -hmm. But instead you put the kids down and then like my friend, a mom friend, after her kids were down, my kids were down, would come over and look what would happen. She gets alone time in my house with my snacks and all that stuff away from her kids (laughs) in in someone else's house. You know, and I I would like set it up with like popcorn and put the her Netflix, put my Netflix up and let her hang out, you know, whatever, while me and my husband um, would go out on our date. And it's kind of like she's getting her me time and we get our date time and then we would swap and we would do that like ever so ever so often, like every couple of weeks where we would split flop. Like I'm at your house watching your kids after hours and then you're at mine, you know? Wow. So that see, look at idea. that. Yeah. That's a great idea. And I've ne- I never thought of that. So that's perfect for somebody mm-hmm. who, you know, was trying to save some coins and, you know. Yeah. Also, connect with spouse and your spouse and your friends. So again, just because you have kids doesn't mean that you should cut yourself off to the world. I know that your schedule changes. I know that you're extremely busy, but there's a saying, people make time for what they want to do, right? So you can always find time. What I do sometimes is... When I'm on my way home from work, well, this was when I was working, I'd like call my friends and and check in with people and talk to them on the way home before I got home. Because I know as soon as I come home, I wash my hands and I get right to cooking. Like I, yeah. that, that's my routine, you know, and mm-hmm. then dinner's on the table. And then if I have a podcast and I, I, you know, I don't have time, I have to go do my podcast. And then by the time you turn around, it's like 830 and, yep. you know. <laughs> It's right. So I usually say, okay, I want to check in, call my friends, whatever, see how this person's doing, call my mom, whatever, do it on my ride home. Or if you're taking a ride to the store or something or whatever, just whenever you have a free moment, try to connect with people or. Yeah, for sure. That definitely helps. Yeah. And having, I would say having a list of one day I just sat and I made a list of who are the like top five, the top five people, you know, outside of your mom and them, like that you want to, maybe it is your mom, you know, that you want to connect or reconnect with this year. So 2020, you know, who is it, would you say, you know, even outside of, again, your family members, because those are sometimes they could tend to be shorter calls depending on who it is, you know, mm-hmm. but like maybe there's like four or five friends in your life that you're like, hey, like, I want to make sure this year I'm really intentional about speaking with this person you know once once a week or maybe it's you know once a month whatever it is and then you kind of just like are intentional about those five relationships you know right so you know who you're calling during that time yeah yeah get to put them in your top five your foot yeah put them on the calendar put those dates those um call dates on the calendar so you know that they happen Schedule alone time with yourself and also make time, sexy time for your spouse because Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the sexless marriage, I listened to that episode. It was really good. You guys should check that out. But, um, real girl, I'm like, I was like, we need to delete this. He's like, no, (laughs) it was so good. I'm glad that you guys were so like, you know, transparent and candid about, you know, like that's pretty awesome. But yeah, I feel like that part of your relationship, you really, you have to try to work on keeping it alive. Yeah, you know, um, that can cause a lot of friction in your relationship. 
and it's very important. That's how you connect with your partner. So Mm -hmm. it's very important to make time for that. I know that when you have children, the first years are so exhausting. You're so tired, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. especially if you have two kids and they're like close in age and, you know, you're working, he's working or, and even just working in the home. Like, let me tell you, girl, I take my hat Mm -hmm. off to you because I couldn't do it. Mm -mm. I'll be in the crazy house right now. This week, like, girl, this been your life for the last thing. No, seriously, to tell about it, right? And you have three children, right? Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. I got laid off one time, and I stayed home with just my daughter. And at the time, I was really grateful for the time because. I that was like I hadn't been a mom in such a long time like to a little baby Mm -hmm. you know because at that time my son was like 14 Mm -hmm. and I was just like oh my gosh I I I can't stay home I mm -mm, I can't do this like (laughs) you know I love it I enjoy it but at the same time like I need to go back to work you know so I couldn't imagine with three Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's definitely a lot you know but there's also a blessing I always you know I always joke about girl it's a lot and I don't know why anyone would choose this path but there's also beauty in it. Now I, I like to like speak about that, like uh, when I can, because it's, it's a beautiful thing too. If you are fortunate to be able to have yeah, that option, and have that I'm sure, you know, to be able to see those moments, you know, with them has been, there's definitely beauty in there, you know, but it's, it's also a big sacrifice for sure. Yeah, it really mm-hmm. is. It, it, it's, it's so, a yeah. double edged sword, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you're right with the sexy time. I think we were talking about the sexy time and making sure that, you know, even when you have the young ones figuring out how to make that work. Yes. And I heard this podcast and they were saying that, um, you know, the, the best thing you can do is figure out how to like, this is going to sound so, so, um, I don't know how it's going to sound, but I said, turn yourself on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have to essentially what we're talking about, like getting dressed for yourself, like figuring out what it is that makes you feel sexy, makes you feel, you know, sexual, you know, so that you can show up that way for you. So it's not just like, okay, fine. Like, you know what I mean? Let's just do it and get it done. It's like, I know I, now I feel like this is something I'm wanting to engage in because I feel beautiful or I feel sexier. I feel confident, confident because I'm taking care of myself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You definitely have to do those things because it's important. Also for keeping yourself on track when you have children, set simple goals for yourself. You know, I interviewed someone who said, don't set goals that you know you're not going to achieve because then it's pointless. So start with simple goals, you know, like you said, make a list of people you want to reconnect with or connect with on a monthly basis or don't set goals for yourself that are like stuff that you know you're not going to do. Like when people say, oh, it's the new year, I'm not going to um eat meat and I'm not going to do this. And, and you know that, that that's not even, you know, so. I think I have that. I definitely um, have struggled with that in the past of like, you know, being an overachiever. You're like, I just want I can do it all. I want to do everything, you know, Mm-mm. and it's like, OK, remember <laughs> that uh, you there, <laughs> there's so many we, we wear so many hats. Right. So there's only so much time to go around or, you know, even within my podcast, I took a I took a big chunk of season off. One was um, due to starting to speak and going to these podcasting conferences, which is an amazing door that opened, being able to speak at conferences and focusing on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the just the bouncing of it all, which, you know, that's a whole nother conversation, but making sure your back end is like, you know, very, very well aligned so that, you know, you can continue to put out episodes without burning out. Mm-hmm. And so I think, yeah, finding out what, what inputs, it, what inputs do you do or that you love that, you know, keep you going? And then how can I um, make this manageable and put it in bite sized pieces and not just like, you know, make it bigger than what it needs to be, essentially, you know? Right. Absolutely. This one I love promote independence in your kids. The mm-hmm. more independent your children are, the better it is for you. If you make your kids dependent on you for sleeping, for eating, for everything, for bath time, for snuggle time, for cuddle time, (laughs) like, no, no. Okay. (laughs) We love our kids. This doesn't mean you don't love your kids, but if you love you, don't do it. Right. Right. No, I hear you on that for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Seek professional help when you feel you need it. I feel like a lot of women 
um, struggle with postpartum depression and things like that. And they don't talk about it. They don't tell anybody and they suffer in silence. Ladies, we cannot do this anymore. We have to speak up. We have to share. We have to tell people how we are feeling and we need to get the help that we need. It is imperative, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, a lot of women don't realize, especially when you're first starting out, that you feel like you're alone. You feel like because of what what is portrayed in social media and in the media in general about what motherhood looks like, it's like I must be the only one feeling, you know, burnt out or feeling like I don't really like my child right now because you're not really seeing that as often as you're seeing everyone with the cute, you know, cute pictures of their kids or, you know what I mean, no one's show, everyone's showing the highlight reel. So it gives this impression of for the for the mom that's at home struggling or dealing with, you know, mental health issues. And even myself, you know, I talk a lot openly on my platform on Instagram about, you know, my own personal struggles with mental health, depression, anxiety, because there is a temptation, especially at first when you when you're like, wait, am I the only one experiencing this or feeling this way? But I'm glad that you're saying that because you're not <laughs> essentially is what we're both saying. It's like, yeah. you're not. This is a universal thing of, you know that you do need to deal with if you're feeling like, you know, if you're just feeling not like yourself in any sort, go, go to get therapy, get someone to talk to about it. You know, there, it's okay. You don't have to be completely at the end of yourself to essentially speak with someone at the very least, you know? Right. I mean, usually when you have the baby, a nurse calls you to check up on you. Even if you don't want to share it with a friend or a family member, tell the nurse, say, look, I'm just not feeling like myself, whatever. <laughs> I feel like when I had my first child that I had, postpartum depression but I didn't know what it was right yeah because I was so young and Mm -hmm. I didn't know you know so looking back I really feel like that's something that I went through yeah ask yourself what you like I think this is so good I think this is even something you should do once a month just check in with yourself yeah make a note like journal whatever just you know like remind yourself that hey I'm a human being too. I have wants and needs and there are things that I like and I want and make a list of them just so you don't forget because you really can lose yourself in your family. So that's important. So I always, not always, but I send out a survey when I'm doing like side talk and I ask people questions. So I sent out a survey and I just wanted to share some of the responses that I got back um, from this survey. So Mm -hmm. I said, the first question was, are you married? And I got some responses back. Um, People, of course, said yes. Um, The longest married person here is 17 years. Mm -hmm. So do you have children? Everyone who responded has a child. What do you do for a living? And they all seem to work outside of the home. That was like Mm -hmm. kind of the point of my question. I wanted to know if they were like home caretakers or they worked Mm -hmm. outside. Um, Do you feel that you spend um, more time taking care of your family and leave yourself for last? And everyone said yes. It was 100%. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, that is we share that. Uh, What do you do for self-care? So I got some people said vacation, spa, uh, mani-pedi. Uh, one person said, just take a shower, which is funny. <laughs> that means that gotta, you got to start somewhere. Okay? <laughs> right. Prayer, um, exercising, those types of things. So those are really good. That means that they're practicing some of the things we talked about. Yeah. Um, have you ever felt as though you didn't know who you were anymore since getting married and having children? And only one person said yes. And another person said sometimes this person said, no, I know who I am, but I put my knees to the side to care for the ones I love before caring for myself very often. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if you have those feelings. Do you talk to your spouse about feeling drained, unmotivated or lost? I love this. This one person's answer. They said most people said that. Yes, they do talk to their spouse about it. Um, mm-hmm. One person said, no, not all the time. But what the one answer that I loved is this person said, when I am drained, believe it, he knows. But I have no problem asking for help. 
I do not try to be superwoman. I know my mental limitations. I love that answer. I wonder how I wonder how long that person's been married. <laughs> I know. It takes I don't a while kn- to, to self advocate in that way and know yourself in that way. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I think I wanna say I think this person if I can match up the years married, I think this is five. Mm-hmm. I think okay. this is five years. Yeah. Let me see what the person see this. Oh, 17 years. The 17 year person said not all the time. So they don't always speak up Mm -hmm. when asking Mm -hmm. when needing help and stuff. I can tell you for me, I speak up when I need help. And sometimes it might be like not in a nice way either. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Because (laughs) I've gone past the, the, the point of just realizing like, oh, girl, you need to ask for some help. Like, you know, that, that whisper, like, girl, you need help. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Well, it's like so our, it's like our kids, right? Like how they, they're losing it. Well, you know, when you're, you're, I'm sure you experience this with your daughter now where it's like, she don't even know why she's frustrated. Mm-hmm. Or upset. You're like that girl just needs some sleep right. you know, or she just needs like so, some friend time or something. You know what I mean? Where it's like, Sometimes it takes us a minute to recognize that's why we're acting crazy and like turning up on our spouses. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm really tired, actually. <laughs> exactly. Right. And sometimes I just like being I just like talking slick. I'm like, oh, well, um, it's nice that you get to watch your shows all day. And, you know, I'm down here <laughs> cooking and making all this food and stuff, you know, like, mm-hmm. where is that coming from? Why are you doing that? I don't even know why I'm doing it. I just feel like doing it because. I'm just like, damn, can somebody cook me dinner? (laughs) You know, and my husband doesn't cook like that, you know, Mm -hmm. so some women are very lucky where their husbands cook, you know, I got a cooker. I can't. (laughs) Right. You know, that's like the best thing ever, girl. You better (laughs) girl appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. I have a friend who was like, I was like, so what, like what happens when you're like completely burned out and you're just like, I can't like, I'm not cooking that. She's like, I've never, I've never not cooked tonight. What do you mean? I'm like, he won't just take over. She's like, no, he does not know how to make a meal. (laughs) Like we won't eat either. We won't eat OB and Cheerios and like cereal, you know? Yeah. Like my husband, he'll at least try like tonight. Um, I was just like, okay, I was working till past the time that I'm supposed to stop. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I have a podcast to do and whatever. And then he's like, okay. So he came down and he like, you know, helped, like he'll take out the shrimp. He'll take out the vegetables. Okay. He's like, what do you want me to do? But then it gets frustrating. I'm like, okay, pour this on there. Should you gotta I tell him all right. stuff. Exactly. He's like, should I wash this off? I'm like, you're like, forget it. Let me just come do right. it. Right. I'm like, of course you got to wash that off. What are you asking me? He's like, you, you're getting, you need to watch your tone. <laughs> I'm just like, this is not worth it. Like, where are you from again in New York? It's coming out. It comes out. Right. From, um, yeah. In New, New York. York. Yeah. New York. Not yeah. the, yeah, Westchester County, but still New York. But yeah, okay. I'm just, forget it, girl. I'm just like, forget it like I can't one thing I don't have the tolerance level for is stupid questions and he says well it might be stupid to you but to me it's a valid question but to me it's dumb like just wash the, the stuff what do you mean <laughs> Yeah, we're cracking up. I know, though. I know what you mean. It's like <laughs> that's so crazy. Is you stupid or is you dumb? Right. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Lord oh, help. God, I intervention. <laughs> So I want to thank all the people that um, fill out the surveys when I send them. I really appreciate you guys because it just gives me some feedback, you know, and some insight into the topics that we're talking about and how you guys are feeling and if you're experiencing the same things that we're experiencing. So that's why I do the surveys and I do appreciate you sharing your personal information and it will never be violated. This survey, I can't even tell who said what because I don't collect the emails so Mm -hmm. you know because I send them a lot of the people on the list are people I know and then there's like a bunch of people that I don't know you know just from my um email list that I collect from my website right right so yeah so I just wanted to say that so people don't you know um so I always ask my guests to share an oh hell no moment so I definitely would love to hear your latest oh hell no moment it could be a moment from your marriage from with your children it could be something just at home or even more personal to you and specific to you 
Um, but it's a moment of shock or disbelief. And I don't have to tell you what an oh hell no moment is, girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl. Well, it's funny because I just, no, the one that's spinning out is like I recently responded to the year um, post about it on Instagram. Mm. <laughs> but um, but I'm, I'm sure there's others, but I just go with that. So yesterday it was like the longest day. It's one of those days where you're trying to just get everything done. Like when you have young kids, it's like you're trying to get the kids down. And nobody wants to go to sleep and all that. And they, someone peed something, someone did something, pushed someone. They all needed a bath and it's like 11 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. So I go in and my my daughter, my five-year-old is like, mom, the tub smells like pee. And I was like, no, baby, it does not. Like, it's just because the toilet is like, you know, next to the tub somewhere right. or whatever. And I was like, you know, your brother has bad aim. She's like, no, mom, it smells like pee in here. I look over the tiles all over the wall and there's pee all over the wall. And, oh, you know, there's gosh. tiles like on the back, uh, backsplash of the bathtub. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, hell no. This little boy done <laughs> squirted his goods all over the bathtub. Oh, my gosh. I can't. I was like, it was the last thing I needed at like near midnight. I was like, OK, get out of the tub. Like I needed, I had to take a break. I was just like, let me go sit down before I come clean this bathroom because I'm about to strangle him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, my, oh, oh hell no. Quarantine, quarantine, um, version. <laughs> wow. That is so crazy. Yeah. That's an oh hell no moment. Cause that's, that's like a kid getting sick in the middle of the night and you got to get up and clean it. Oh. I know. It's like, uh, yeah, mm -mm. For sure. <laughs> that's the worst. So it was such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your personal life with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun. Yes. Please tell everybody where they can check out your podcast and become a part of your community and yeah. Um, yeah, check you out. So if you're looking for me, you can find me um, on Instagram at ink.fully or if you just put in um, inkfully, it'll come up. But at ink.fully, my name's Tanya again. So you can find me there. And then the name of my podcast podcast is called the inkfully podcast and it's on apple it's on google podcast and wherever you prefer to listen awesome 